Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode five review of Andor. What is this uh, title called? The Axe Forgets, I think, is the name of uh, this episode. Yes, the, the Axe, Axe being Forgets. The Empire. Ah. <laughs> the Empire Forgets. <laughs> All the people they've <laughs> fucked over that are going to come back to fuck them over. Um, is this the first time we've ever had metaphor in the Star Wars universe? <laughs> maybe. I feel like it might be. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Um, so we've watched the first four episodes. We yeah. have been big fans, but you can check out the first two uh, reviews we've done of the first four episodes uh, on the channel here. And I was looking, I mean, this is like the highlight of my week. I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm going to come home from work. I'm going to watch Andor. And it's, and it's all going to be great. So um, I'm interested to see what you thought of this episode. Do you want to just give us a brief overview? I mean, you don't have to go into super detail, but brief overview of what this uh, episode is all about. So this episode was largely sort of a day before the battle buildup. Um, we saw the, them putting together the last minute details before their payroll heist, our, our you know, rebels on Aldani. And we're getting some character beats. We're getting to know some of these people. We're trying, getting to see the dynamics between them. And Andor is trying to navigate this growing distrust that they have for him. Uh, the further things go on and the uh, unwilling continue to he continues to be unwilling to answer questions. It just continues to sort of like foment this um, tension between him and and a couple of people in particular. Um, and uh, so they're leading up to that. We're also seeing sort of some cracks in the plan. You know, we're seeing places where they're maybe not as prepared as they need to be, a.k.a. stakes. Um, we also <laughs> had like are... months and months and months to plan this out. And they're like. Dude, you got to have him on the left-hand side. He's left-handed, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, they're making simple, fatal mistakes and not even realizing it. Well, that uh, that's great because that's exactly mm -hmm. what people in high-stress, you know, situations, that's what they do. They fuck up. They, they overlook the simple details because they're so focused on the bigger picture. And they're like, oh, crap. Yeah, that that, that is a bad idea. Yeah, and at least their their leader um, uh, Vel is willing to hear him, where some of the other people are much less so. Uh, we also so there is um, this guy Skeen who is mo very very suspicious of Andor, but they have this really interesting conversation where the title of the episode comes from, where we learn a little bit about their shared history of being in prison. We see some some Star we see our very first Star Wars gang tattoos, which I yeah. thought was interesting. The the crate head and the hand are both apparently prison by the hand are prison gangs in Star Wars. But um and then we meet Nimic the idealist. So we, we saw him in the last episode. He's kind of like the sweetie pie who I'm like definitely gonna die. My opinion has not changed but we see him talking about his sort of political manifesto um and he has some like pretty interesting ideas about the empire like i i was really i was very into this scene because it's like you this is where i think this is separate from everything else it's just sort of this human element and this sort of you know nitty gritty of the rebellion where everything has been very like big and flamboyant in the past this is like the smaller like ideas and beliefs that really are the core of a rebellion being expressed through this show. Yeah, um, and I actually, there, there's a line in this, because, I mean, I think we both agree the just the writing in this show is so far superior to anything that we've seen, you know, since at least probably the original trilogy. I'll even throw Mandalorian into that, because Mandalorian, for as great as it is, I don't think it, it has great, like, dialogue writing <laughs> you know mm -hmm. it's uh it, it's most notable for it's sort of the main character's lack of dialogue right, <laughs> right <laughs> you know so, right <laughs> um but there's a line in here that i thought was and i agree with you this scene is incredible where um the guy go he's telling this, this whole thing and he tells cassie he's like uh, he says quote the pace of repression outstrips our ability to understand it as oh, sort of I, as, yes. as, as sort of like the way that like the empire so quickly took over the galaxy and and people just sort of came to you know okay this is just how it is you know um because right. of that and just they were the speed in which they just took over everything and said this is the way it is and we're gonna you're gonna deal with it now and then people just sort of said okay and they accepted it because they mm -hmm. didn't quite understand what was happening and 
you know, it, it's lines of dialogue like that that I think if if you're if you're a Star Wars fan who's like, man, I just want to see lightsabers and right. blasters and explosions, you're not going to get much out of this show. Like, you have to sit there and listen to the dialogue because it's so fucking good, and you're like, wow, and. You know, and you know, I use my mom as a as a good example of this because she's just sort of like, a, oh, I like Star Wars, I like the lightsabers and stuff like that. My mom would watch it. There's no way she would even catch that, <laughs> right? Um, oh, she would, really? She would find, yeah, she would find that this is just kind of like a quote unquote boring show. And I've actually uh, talked to a couple of my friends who are saying the same thing. Like, this is just boring. N- nothing happens oh. in this show. It's just people sitting around talking. I'm like, that's th- these are the important moments. But this in I, yeah. I have a comment about that later on, but I'll let you continue to. But yeah, that scene is fucking great. Dialogue is incredible. I mean, honestly, I'm kind of grateful for this episode. Really slows down. Like we were ramping up towards this heist, and this this episode is kind of like an inhale before we go Calm go go. And I think we need it, you know, because and I'm glad that we have more episodes that we can have kind of a quieter one like this where we can have these quiet character moments because there are several moments throughout the episode where the characters have enough room to breathe to just have little human moments. Like, uh, you know, later we see one of the Imperial guys like sneaking a cigarette. That is nothing we would never ever have seen in like Obi-Wan. And I think yeah. it 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 it's grounding this in a way that that I really am connecting with personally. Um, And so, yeah, the other thing that we find out is that they don't totally know how to do the technology part of this heist. And there's some pretty big holes. Um, There's a, I love, I actually really loved that scene where he thinks it's a test. And then he realizes that they genuinely don't know that there's this like very essential gauge on the thing. They're going to, I guess, I don't know exactly know what it is, but this thing they're going to pull out, but that has the pay the payroll in it. Um, yeah. I yeah, don't know. There's some, they're, I think, well, they're so, they're so, into the mission of like the the main point of the mission they want to like fuck over the empire and they believe in it so much as to what they're doing and this will bring up a question i'm going to have for you later on uh uh don't let don't let me forget to ask you something about this group that we're following here um but it's just like they're kind of in over their heads, right? And I think yes. even some of the stuff you see with Luthen in this episode, because he's not in it very much, maybe just a scene, I think. And mm-hmm. he's like panicking, right? He, he's literally panicking. I, I wrote down in my notes here, like this whole episode is just anxiety. Everyone yes. has like anxiety levels high. Like even my girl old Deidre, like she's popping pills because of the stress <laughs> What she's uh, out. No I think one's they were going up, not going down. I feel like there's a clear like <laughs> Nazi illusion happening that around her be. with like her speed with taking the speed. This is a very like anti-fascist episode, like more so even though in the past we're just saying a lot. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I also like that we get some of more of Lieutenant Gorn. We get to find out his backstory that he like has yeah. a, like a kind of like a broken heart backstory um i'm guessing we'll know more but i don't know i all of this stuff i felt like was really really important and well, it gets it gets into the, to, to the anxiety tragedies. yes and to yeah. the anxiety the soundtrack in this is just a like low percussion the whole time just yeah. and you really like feel it in your chest in a way that i i mean we are so used to people having so much um you know plot armor that it feels very naked to be like oh no these people are gonna die this yeah. they, star wars of it all is not going to protect the good people from dying here yeah and there's another line i don't remember the exact line because uh, i i didn't write it down but um maybe it's skeen i can't remember who says it but because skeen talks about how you know when he's kind of you know quote unquote apologizing to cassian uh mm-hmm. the best he can <laughs> where somebody has a line of dialogue where they're like everybody has their own rebellion like everybody who's here has a different reason why they hate the empire. It's, 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 you know, yeah. personal direct reasons as to why they hate them and why they're doing what they're doing. Yes. They want to see the, right. the empire fall, but Skeen wants to see it fall because his brother committed suicide, you know, because the empire mm-hmm. fucked up his tree farm, <laughs> essentially, <Right. laughs> you know, and Gorn of course lost the love of his life for, uh, for it. And, you know, so, so it's just like, man, they, 
and that's real life. Everybody has yeah. a different reason. You know, people go to war for all kinds of reasons, and each person, you know, individual has their own reasons. And and because we're all human beings, we don't think exactly the same. Uh, and even the the show is showing that even the empire, people within the empire, aren't necessarily thinking exactly the same. Um, right. And and so I think that's really kind of interesting. Uh, uh, anyway, sorry, didn't mean to cut you off. You know, I totally agree with you. I absolutely agree with you. I think we've always been dealing in these like very big ideas in the past. And like this time we're telling personal stories. I don't know. Very interesting. Um, on, I guess we're not done with Ferrix after all. We get a one quick scene where we see that the Empire is taking over that the town that uh, Andor was in. And uh, they're taking over a hotel uh, to use as its headquarters. Not a ton of plot here, but I do love the moment where the person who's like kind of in charge is like, ah, can I have the title of prefect? I know it doesn't come with any more money, but can I have it? And you just see these like... <laughs> Like, again, these human moments of this just, like, you yeah. know, ambition and I don't know. I, I kind of love the sort of mundane sort of levels of evil in this as opposed, like, I know you love the emperor and his lightning fingers, but I also, it runs on what he's able to do it on are these, like, sort of this guy who's in the middle of occupying a city oppressing a people and he's like can i have this you know in name only title you know a, well, that's a good bump. for the resume you know <laughs> yes but i don't know i just appreciate like yeah i don't feel like we would see that in like a bad batch you know what i mean like yeah, we don't yeah, get this kind of thing it's these little things that you can relate to because i mm -hmm. think you know most people i mean take away the fact that the guy's working for the empire and you know people are like oh the empire is evil blah blah, blah. but I think most people can relate to be like, oh man, what, can I have this extra little thing? Like this little, you know, nice title at work. That'd be cool. You know, it's, it's that human moment of where it can relate to everybody, not necessarily in a negative mm -hmm. way. Uh, and it's this, this guy is doing, but just in terms of like, Hey, we all want a little something, a little recognition, a little extra right. on top of what we're doing. And yeah, it's, it, they don't have to do that. They don't have to. It, it was like that scene, I think it was in when we first see Luthen sort of put on the, the wig and stuff they mm -hmm. could have immediately cut away from that and then shown him with mon mothma but they they leave it on him just sort of mm -hmm. relishing the moment of who he is now uh, and it's like it's little things like that it's like oh okay they're they're really planning this out they're really thinking yeah. through you know they're, they're really gonna like harm us when they all die <laughs> yeah yeah, I mean, I I think it's it, you're, I agree with you completely. I think it's for me, it's like also just the backdrop of when he's wanting this sort of little, little, you know, acknowledgement, right, that he's doing it against the backdrop of what's literally happening behind him. And it shows the ways that the the like, the smaller ways that the empire is evil, as opposed to some of the more flamboyant ways. And I don't know, I just really love that about this um that's really kind of all that happens there so the rest of it is really coruscant related we get our we've got three different parties there first of all there's like the saddest former corpo officer cyril karn who's just looking <laughs> off into the distance with his action figures in the background um and then going and eating and like his wheaties with blue milk it's great it's great these details are great like the stuff with his mom is so like she just grinds him down he feels so just put upon and aggrieved it's it's great stuff yeah and, and it, cyril and his mom like whoever the actor is i don't know the name of the actor off the top of my head but he's great like when you first see him in there he says nothing right he's just in his room but he's looking out the window and just the amount of emotion in his eyes and he's tearing up and welling up and you just know you don't have to have a ton of dialogue you know exactly what this guy's feeling he is the most embarrassed person ever you know he's mm -hmm. probably even more embarrassed he had to come back to his mother who he ran away from to try to like make it on his own had to come back to her with his tail between his legs and he he's he's got some rage he's got some rage going oh, yes. on and and uh <laughs> you know at the very end of this you, you see that he's still he's got that little uh, hologram thing of of Cassian yes. andor here's my prediction yes. my prediction is that they have tore this guy down in order to build him up so i think what's going to end up happening is uh at the end of this season i think he is going to either foil whatever big 
something is going on with Cassian mm. and what her plans. And we, we will end on like a cliffhanger of Cyril sort of like, quote unquote, winning at the end, um, which will lead us into what happens in season two. Because I don't think, uh, you know, writing characters, I don't think you open a show just completely kind of, you know, for lack of a better term, like emasculating this character yeah. this bad only to have him be that way the entire rest of the series. I mean, he's he's going to sort of find himself and he's mm-hmm. going to sort of quote unquote win whatever that looks like in the show towards the end. Um I so that we you're kinda, right. that's that's my guess. But who's on I mean, Polly? Who's gonna give him I, his job? <laughs> I know, I'm looking for it. Like is I'm guessing he's gonna be some weird middle management like stoolie who the fam like is the most powerful in the family, but is actually like kind of a slimy garbage person. Is, we'll see. We'll see. Is Cyril um, is Cyril gonna go into the Empire? Is that what he's gonna do? Oh yeah. I think he is on a collision course for Ghidra. And he like a to your point though, he's my favorite kind of villain. He's to me the scariest kind of villain. He's not like the dastardly mustache twirling, but the like sad and 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 rageful and that that these are the kinds of villains that to me are the scariest and the best i know you did not watch game of thrones but there was a character named joffrey and he was like the privileged version of of a serial i saw game of thrones i watched all seasons of it you did oh yeah i saw the whole thing yeah i I hated it from episode one i hated it i thought it was (laughs) terrible but we were we were hate watching it because we felt we had to be part of the cultural zeitgeist and, and try to understand what was happening here so I could tell my friends why it's fucking sucked. <laughs> you are, I swear, you have like ODD. I, I think that's your thing. Like oppositional, um, just like it's like a, you can't deal with any sort of um, authority figures. Like you, you have a little oppositional <laughs> disorder. <laughs> Which is weird because I love the emperor so much. Yeah, I guess that is. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you only like authoritative. I don't know. Whatever. You like getting domed by your authoritative leaders. Um, yes. But Deidre. yeah, so he's he's great. Was very oh my god. Was very excited to see the blue milk. Was very excited to see Deidre pop and pills. But she is. She here's the thing. She's a bad guy, but she's a very compelling character, and. It feels like a threat. She does not feel like a bumbling bad guy like we've had in some of these other things. She feels like a genuine threat to. Andor Are they going to turn her resistance. good though? That's that's no. the question. Like I don't want them to make mm-hmm. her a good guy. I want her to make. She's got to stay a bad guy, or bad girl, bad woman, whatever you want to term it. I she's. I want her to be fully invested in the. Uh, perspective and viewpoint of the empire and you know is trying to convince these other empire fools uh, of what's going on but i don't want her to suddenly switch to the rebellion and work Mm -hmm. from the inside i don't want to see that i don't feel my gut says no i feel like she's going to find a kindred spirit in cyril karn i I think they're going to be a, a force to be reckoned with because she doesn't seem like conflicted in any way about the empire at all (laughs) i I actually actually believe her yeah i actually kind of want a more fully fleshed out episode just focused on her and sort of like Mm -hmm. because we get a little bit of backstory you know she came from quote-unquote enforcement and why is she in the uh, because didn't the guy say in one of the last episodes or something like you're here for a reason like we brought you here uh, I want to know more about that. So um, I'm looking forward to sort of learning more about her character going forward. Yeah. I think having all of these episodes, there's a good chance because they're hinting at things with her. I don't know if we'll get a full episode, but I think we're definitely going to get more of her backstory and I'm excited to hear it. I'm interested. I'm interested. Like I trust these writers now to some degree to like give us an interesting background that feels authentic. You know, I don't know. We'll, yeah. we'll see. They could they could, t- they could take a turn on us. Um, we also get some more of Mon Mothma's very sad home life. We meet her daughter, Lita, who her and her father both um, really are not on the same page with her, shall we say? <laughs> they seem to feel very resentful of uh, her work as a senator. That's an interesting dynamic I was not expecting in this, like this villainizing of the powerful and um ambitious woman 
is interesting. Well, I like In that way... she, she even mentions to him, she's like, look, like I'm trying to do good things here. And they just kind of blow her off like, yeah, right. You're, you're just working for the Imperials, basically, and doing doing their bidding, ultimately. It, it, it is a weird... It was really unusual, I guess I'll say. Like, I, I agree with you. I was like, I'm not used to seeing something like that in Star Wars. Mm -hmm. So I was... I don't know how I felt about it. It was just odd. I mean, it was interesting, I guess, to me, but I don't, I don't quite know how to think of it because I've never encountered it before. <laughs> it like, yeah. I mean, it adds like a, a degree of stakes. I know I keep saying that word to her life, right? Because in, in addition to genuinely just being like, they would kill her in a second if they found out what she was doing. She's also making a lot of personal sacrifices at home. She's leading a double life and hiding herself from her family i mean her husband seems like he's the worst and the daughter does too but there's probably you kind of in this episode get a little bit about like why are you pretending to be involved why are you pretending like why are you putting on a front like you care um and yeah. so yeah i don't know i think well, that's again interesting choice well there's a human humanization that's going on with mon mothma i think that's obviously mm -hmm. intentional with the writers oh, here because yeah. in the movies she always comes across as just sort of like this stoic grand leader, you know, just generically good almost. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, like she just there to be sort of like the stock leader of the rebellion. Um, and this is sort of showing her kind of like the overwhelming amount of shit she's putting up with uh, to your point, like all the sacrifices she's making for this, you know, the expense of her family and all that and rebellion stuff would be enough to freak anyone out. But then she has to deal with this smarmy asshole husband. Uh, she's got this teenage daughter with teenage daughter attitude problems. Um, and I think one of the great things the show's doing is providing sort of greater context to a character like Mon Mothma so that when you see her, no matter how briefly it is, you know, in Return of the Jedi, you know, many Bothans died to bring us this information. That, that's it. Okay, <laughs> but you're going to, it's going to sort of enrich your understanding of what she had to go through to get to that place and what she had to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, okay, I'm going to go watch Return of the Jedi and I see Mon Mothma there. I'm like, oh yeah, look at all this shit she did to get yeah. the, the rebellion to where it is um, in mm -hmm. Return of the Jedi. So I love it. This is I the love the best kind that. of of prequel right one that actually yeah. enriches when you go back it like adds layers of of import or complications i don't know i love it it's great her daughter's great. toast though her daughter's gonna <laughs> die uh, oh you it think has so i think oh so, like because... they're gonna like blow up her car but her daughter was inside it kind of thing like something's, an attempted assassination because they keep like this this whole episode was was characters explaining why they're anti empire right the horrible mm -hmm. thing the tragedies that have happened to them oh. uh the you know the brother committing suicide and i don't mm -hmm. know if the the girl that um gorn loved is dead it wasn't exactly clear what happened to her right or if she just kind of like left or what um but mon mothma we haven't seen what she has sacrificed all we're seeing right. in this show is this sort of opulent extravagant living she's got you know this amazing house they're rich beyond belief um we haven't seen what she has actually sacrificed yet to make her right. all in on this and i yeah. think i think her daughter's Ooh. gonna go bye bye at some point <laughs> i love it this is that's great my prediction that's my prediction all right. Our last, you mentioned we saw him very briefly. Luthen is nervous. He is worried that he's brought in Cassian too late, that they're not ready. I mean, and to be fair, like, these are very valid concerns he has. But I bring this up because you pointed something out to me that I had missed that is very interesting, which was something in the background. Oh, the holocrons. Or yes. the Shankara stones. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> well, what's funny I'm is very excited to see those. <laughs> every every time I'm uh you know, every time Luthen pops up in his little den yeah. of antiquities on there, I have a mm -hmm. I honestly have a hard time focusing on what he's saying and I'm looking around <laughs> at all this shit in the background and uh and I immediately the saw the the holocrons. Uh right. the Jedi and the Sith holocrons. I was like, wow. And then I just kinda looked over, I'm like is that their Indiana Jones little Easter egg right there? The Sankara stones. Um, but yeah, and man, I mean, everything about this episode, again, 
I've seen a lot of chatter online already. People were like, oh, it's boring. Nothing happens. You're ridiculous I don't people. want there to be things that happen, quote unquote. I don't need explosions and lightsabers and blasters. We're going to get that the next episode. Um, right. I anticipate that this, this thing, whatever they're going to do, the heist is going to be action. You're, you're kind of, I mean, you're going to get as much action as you've wanted to see, but I, I need to see these characters die off and I need to feel it. You know, I don't want them to die, but I need them to die. Right. And I think that was one of the big problems with um, the solo movie. I love the solo movie. Um, People hate that movie, but I I actually like it. But the main problem with that is, especially the the, uh, first, I don't know, 40 minutes of it with Woody Harrelson's character um, and who was the actress. Um, so no, so was it, it Zoe? Sol- no, Tandy no, no. Newton. Tandy, Tandy Newton. Newton. Yeah, Tandy Newton. Um, that whole sort of crew that was there, I didn't get to learn anything about any of them, and then they just died off. And it's I think like she even said in an shot. interview. Yeah. <laughs> she, I, I think she even said in an interview, uh, she was like, no, "They they completely ruined this character. I got, I mean, there's no emotional investment in my character whatsoever, because um, mm. they just chopped up the movie and reshot it and all that stuff." But I, I don't want any of these these people to die, which leads me to a question. I'm gonna have for <laughs> okay. You. Do you think anybody in our motley ragtag group of rebels is a turncoat and is going to try to fuck up the heist? Like any of the people that we've been introduced oh. to, like, oh, we love these characters. Are they doing anything? Is one of them actually an Imperial sympathizer, for example, will do anything to fuck up uh, the mission here? Or do you think we're just going to go straight? We're going to get this incredible sort of like uh, asteroid shower and the eye is going to open and and they're just going to get through pretty much scot-free. I mean, I think... I, it had not occurred to me that there would be a turncoat amongst them simply for the same reasons that they give about like if this if there was a turncoat we would we would be they would have already turned us in by now you know like they're getting buzzed we didn't even talk about that but they they're getting buzzed by tie fighters and stuff <laughs> I love um, the tie fighters. That's two episodes in a row where a tie fighter just flies by and people are panicking. And it's so nice to see. As you would. <laughs> yeah. It is it is so I can't tell you how fucking nice it is to see like characters in a Star Wars you know piece of media actually scared of the Empire and actually mm-hmm. scared of the things that the Empire can do because I think one thing that Star Wars has gotten really far away from is is the Empire really that scary? It seems like they're only terrified if you know a big giant planet size killing weapon is right next to the planet or something like that right. You know, I, I want when stormtroopers and death troopers and all these people, when the Empire shows up in force in this show, I want them to like fucking massacre an entire village or town or something. I, mm-hmm. I need to see, I need to see why the rebellion uh, is necessary and important. You know, it's right. not just this sort of, Oh, Grand Moff Tarkin blows up a planet and we see it for two seconds and then we move on to the next thing. I need to see the rep, uh, the ramifications of stormtroopers blasting the hell out of civilians and like putting mm-hmm. down the resistance, you know, as you know, like you said, space Nazis. That's yeah. what they do. They go in and they fuck everything up and they say, guess what? You know, you're 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 going to be nice now, or we're going to do this again. And then show me how those individuals, not just okay, we're going to rise up against them, but a lot of people justifiably so because people you know when you go through something like that you might just want to be like okay <laughs> i'm just gonna i'm gonna be pro empire now you know right. um i don't want to have to deal with this kind of thing i i'm whether terrified and uh, worried about their family members or something they just go along with it at that point i want to mm-hmm. see that and i think the show is gonna right. give it to us i mean yeah i think so too i think it'll be interesting what'll be interesting to see is when the heist inevitably goes wrong how much of a threat those soldiers are because i mean it's a joke at this point uh how bad a shot like a stormtrooper is and so when the the firefights start you're like yeah 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 and i want to see how effective this group is and how 
up against like just human versus human, how much of a threat they are, I think is really, really important. Um, I do think, okay, here's my question for you. Do you think the entire group is going to survive this heist? Because I'm guessing this is a long season. We're on episode, we're going to be on episode six. So halfway through, it's not going to be the last heist of the episode or the season. So do you think that our group makes it out completely alive from this one? Or do you think we're going to no. get our first casualty next week? Uh, my, I'm going to predict that, was it Skeen? Skeen? Mm. I think Skeen's going to die. I think he will oh. die trying to protect Cassian or something, right? Because their whole thing is they've set up, they're trying to get this weird transport thing off. They're probably going to set up something like Cassian needs some extra time to do whatever he needs to do to get this thing going because no one else knows how to do it. And I think Skeen will start to sacrifice himself for the greater good to try to get them out and about. Um, and that's why I was what I was thinking because they show Gorn intentionally telling all oh, all these Imperials, yeah, you can go out and watch the the Great Eye opening and stuff, and trying to keep nobody there, but somebody's got to find out and figure out that they're there, yeah. which is yeah. what leads me to think, okay, is there somebody in their mm. little group that's actually a uh, Imperial sympathizer? Uh, wouldn't it be wild if we found out like Luthen was? real that would be wild no i mean that would be a that'd be a bummer actually he's a good character but like he's he's just (sighs) playing all these different characters right um you know imperial spy Mm. you know master imperial spy so that's my prediction i think skeen skeen bites it for sure i don't think uh i can't there's there's a girl in the group i can't remember her name but well, there's Senta, who is... Like, is she the, the one that was Asian bandaging actor? him up? Yes. I mean, like, okay. obviously, they're vibing, even though she has a girlfriend. Mm-hmm. I don't think I don't think she dies just because we haven't really got to spend any time with her character no, no. yet. I don't think so, so either. That, that's why I think Skeen is, is going to kick it next week, because he's, Interesting. He, he, had, he had this whole thing, right? We have a whole basic episode of his backstory and him apologizing in his way to Cassian. I think he's toast. Okay. Um, okay. So that's 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 my thing there. Um, so my prediction I, is it Nimic. It's going to be Nimic who like gives his life for the cause because he's the true believer. Uh, yeah, and I don't think be... Skeen survives the season, but I think Skeen makes it out of this heist. That's my prediction because I feel like there's a like they, they, we have a starting point of an arc with those two, and I think maybe we're going to see them like it's going to be a little Maverick, you know, Iceman situation. That will th- ultimately end with the sacrifice. See, I think, I'm, and I'm going to call that guy. What do you say? His name is Nemec. Yes. Um, I'm going to call him like Young John Hanna because that's what he <laughs> looks like. Every time I see him, I'm like, oh, that's just like a really young John Hanna. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> um, it's it's weird, but um, I think I he's got to survive because <laughs> he's 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 writing his manifesto. That manifesto's got to get out. So, in mm. my in my view, um, you know, the point them pointing out that he's writing this manifesto, I think that his manifesto is going to be what ultimately spreads around and gets more people oh, on board the rebel cause. That's, that, that's how, interesting. That's what I think, and that would be weird if they killed him off before he could actually write it. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually I could see that. Yeah, I could see them like seeding that into sort of the larger Star Wars lore that he is the yeah. Sort and of I think the, that'd be awesome too because I don't think is, we've really heard of a like a manifesto, at least that I know of, um, in canon that was sort of going around. You would need something like that, right, uh, to get so many people on board. You could show them later on it being yeah. translated into different languages and. And things that I mean, it's on the streets. People are like trading it in the back alleys and stuff like that. And that'd be a really yeah. awesome way to do it. He's our so Thomas I'm... Payne. That's amazing. Yes. Okay, I, I, yes, I'm okay. I'm changing my opinion. I don't think I think he's gonna make it through this episode. I hope so maybe so. there's the guy. There's another guy in the group that he when he was like telling him like we need to switch sides, and he was like resistant and sort of the second command in command guy. Maybe he, yeah, he feels we haven't really done anything with him. He feels a little red shirty. He could probably go. I think Gorn's biting it too. I think he's. Oh yeah, die. it's a wrap for Gorn. I, yeah, because I think <laughs> I think the Imperials are going to find out what he did, and I think we're yep. going to see him executed in a very public way. <laughs> you know, and to I think show we'll get that backstory, right? We're going to get the backstory of what really like he'll be like. You killed my woman, 
Oh, I don't for care. sure. For sure, yep. for sure. Um, two questions I had on my notes here that I wanted to ask you real quick. So, um, and this this relates to our, our good friends Ronan and Steve. Um, so, <laughs> we had Book of Boba Fett, which arguably wasn't about Boba Fett. Um, no. We had Obi Wan, which arguably was not about Obi Wan. Uh, and now we have Andor, which, at least to this point, doesn't really feel like it's about Cassian Andor. It feels like it's about a bigger sort of cast of characters and things that are mm. going on. So, you know, I know Stephen Ronan sort of checked out of this show from the very beginning. As soon as they heard they're making a show about Andor, some guy that was in Rogue One, we're out. Don't care about it. Not going to watch it. They're lost. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I wonder, do you think that this show should have been called, I don't know, some like Rise of the Rebellion or something uh, and had Cassian Andor in it like like it does, mm. but not had just been named Andor? Because I, I feel like and maybe this will change as we watch more and more episodes. I mean, we got like, I don't know, 18 more to go or whatever. Um, so maybe it'll turn and focus more on him. But it feels like just naming it Andor I would have liked something more about, you know, like a rise of rebellion or something like that. I think, I don't know. What do you, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, Hmm. I do. I mean, I think we're going to, I guess time will tell, right? Because yeah. right now it is very much, like you said, an ensemble more so than maybe we were expecting. He is still largely our central character, but we're really spending a lot of time away from him as well. But presumably not all of these people are going to make it. So he seems to be the character that we're going to start. We're going to stick with from start to finish. Like it could have been, I guess it could have been like Andor and Mothma, <laughs> but like, <laughs> yeah. I don't... <laughs> and I, th- and I think to your point where these people aren't going to make it in my opinion, mm-hmm. as a, as a writer, I think the main reason why that's going to be the case is because if the show is ostensibly about Cassie and Andor, this show has to explain why he is the way he is in Rogue One at the beginning of Rogue One. And he's so fucking, he just is bitter, jaded, hates everything. It's because he's suffered immense amounts of loss. And the Empire has fucked him over and killed his friends and killed all the people that that he loves and has grown to love. I don't think Bix will make it out of this. Um, Who knows? I mean, this thing opened with him trying to find his sister. We don't even know oh, what's right. going on with his sister. Remember, he's trying to find his sister. He went to the brothel to find her. Right. God, so much has happened. I completely forgot about the sister plot. <laughs> I know. I know. So it's just like we we still have to deal with all of that. I mean, something's going to happen to the sister. <laughs> you know, you know, yeah. the sister's going to oh, kick in as well. Yeah. So there's all kinds of stuff. Now, I will tell you the one thing that I was disappointed I did not see in this episode, and okay. that was I wanted to see that dinner. That Mon Mothma was gonna have with oh, the Emperor's like inner yes, circle. That's right. They mentioned like, oh, they're like, you can't don't ever she tells her dickhole husband, don't ever invite these people <laughs> over again, blah blah. You know, these are awful, horrible people, and they name drop like Sly Moore and like all these people, I'm like, holy shit, that's the Emperor's like inner circle of people that support him. I wanted to see that fucking dinner. And I wanted to see how I wanted to see Mon Mothma have to do what her daughter says she does in this episode, putting on this air pretense and, and a show and trying to act all nice and stuff to these awful, horrible people. Because we forget Mon Mothma is a senator. She has to yeah. play both sides on this. She yeah. has to be able to be like, oh, yes, uh, that's a great idea. Um, and, you know, I totally support that. And you can count on my vote and blah, 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 blah. I didn't get to see that. And I was really disappointed. I hope they do that more in the future. Like, I hope we get some scenes where we see Mon Mothma have to do the politics. And sometimes politics is ugly. Sometimes you have to side with the things you really don't want in order to get the bigger thing that you want later on down the road. And I want to see them play with that. I really Mm -hmm. do. Okay. I I support. And now that you point that out, see, that's the thing is they give us so much that I forget to want other things. I will say, okay. I have one last question for you. When do you think KTSO shows up? That's what I want to know. Oh, I think it'll be like the last. Well, I, you maybe the last episode of the season. They can afford Alan Tiddick, right? Like, they can get him in here. Oh, I think he already said he's in it. 
But uh, oh, I really? think Alan, yeah, Alan Tudyk said he told everybody he's like, oh, I'm not in season one though. So he's, I think he's on board. So he's going to show up at some point because he has okay. to. Okay. Um, but I think he'll show up. I, I think ultimately, here's here's my fanfic that I'm writing right this minute. Okay. Okay. I think Cyril will, you know, rise up and he's going to do something, whether they capture Cassian and or what, whatever they do at the end, mm-hmm. you know, the cliffhanger for season two. And I right. think uh, K2SO is the one that saves Cassian. And that's how their friendship oh, starts. Oh, I like it's, it. I mean, I think that's how it happens. Since we know it's 24 episodes and we're getting 12 this season, presumably episode, I know, presumably episode 12 would be like, if this were a trilogy, your Empire Strikes Back era, right? So yeah. they, I agree with you. Like, I think maybe this, this ep- season ends on a bit of a downer because- then the rest of the arc is next season or presumably like probably in a way that isn't complicated and not like very straightforward. Uh, presumably he gets some win over the empire, but I mean, we know he's still in the fight, you know, he, he doesn't see the end. He doesn't see what happened, you know, that, that, that all these efforts are successful. So who knows, yeah. who knows? Maybe this thing has a grim as hell ending. We'll see. Well, again, it has, the empire has to, quote unquote win in this time yeah. period they have right. to we have to see yeah. we have to see atrocities we have to see all kinds of horrible right. stuff we got to see the political maneuvering of how they fuck people over taking away their rights um you know all of that stuff we we got to see it so that at the end of the season it's like there is no hope whatsoever how in the world is cassian going to get out of this and how are they even going to get to the point where they can try to go steal some death star plans um right. you know and i am here for it i mean this show is fucking great and yeah i mean we're only five episodes in i'm not going to say this is better than mandalorian but i will say that if this continues at this kind of level through the whole yeah. season i don't mm-hmm. think i'd have a problem saying this is actually better than mandalorian it's better like in its own way it's 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 better Um, yeah i mean like the mandalorian is more fun you know and that has a ton of value especially in a star wars situation but there can be something that you have a better time doing versus but recognize that something else is quote-unquote better i would argue that we this is already quote-unquote better because of the performances and the writing i disagree yeah, yeah, I would not disagree with you on that. I mean, I would not be able to argue that point with, with someone. Yeah. Um, I do think that, I mean, if you're just looking at Mandalorian versus Andor in terms of, like, what's what's more fun? Yeah. Oh, baby, Gro- you Grogu and, and Mandalorian <laughs> and lightsabers showing up and pew, 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 pew. Um, yeah, Mandalorian's <laughs> got that. But, of uh, course. But, you know, and we haven't seen, like, I'm so looking forward to next week because they built up this event, right? They have set up the last two episodes, like, everybody on this planet comes out to see this fucking event. It's amazing. Right. The Imperials are like, yeah, the Imperials want to go watch it because it's incredible. So I want to see, like, visually, what do they do? Because this show has been very, very light on the CG and, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, you see it in like landscapes and, and things of that nature and Coruscant and things of that nature. But uh, I want to see what the hell they do. Like, what is this great eye opening and all these like asteroids flying all over the place? Yeah. <laughs> are they going to fly through kind of like a weird black hole or something? Like what, what are they oh. going to do? Um, and so I think, I think if, if they pull, if they pull it off, um if they if the filmmakers like check out this amazing thing that we've got planned we we did all this build up now check this shit out here's 20 minutes of this incredible heist with this inc- these incredible visuals i mean oh my god i can't wait i can't oh my wait. God. i know <laughs> so we didn't say at the front of the episode but i'd like to know did you like this episode <laughs> loved it yeah. loved this episode i loved it I and you know it's, i know it's it's a testament to how good the writing is where I don't care that there's no action in it. Like I don't, Mm-mm. I just, I could watch another three episodes of build up with these characters yep. just sitting around talking, you know, doing their thing. Uh, I could, I could watch a whole show season of that. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm looking forward to the heist. And I read that these are like three episode arcs. That's how the yeah. writers uh, created these. So like the first three episodes was sort of our introduction to Cassian and how he, 
gets involved and then these three episodes are basically the storyline up to this heist and then there's gonna be Mm. another three and i think i think they time jump is what i've read oh shit so so i don't think it's gonna be like immediately after you know episode six episode seven is just the immediate aftermath i think they're time jumping around and doing things like that um so i I don't want them to just because i would like to exist in this world as long as possible (laughs) like you don't need to cut all that let's just let's just do it let's just stay it's fine well i was thinking i was watching this and you know i was thinking about mon mothma and where she's talking about the bothans that you know died for the death star plans most people don't realize they always think oh yeah the the death star plan well we saw that we saw that story in rogue one no no that's that's who stole the second Death Star plans. <laughs> the Bothans. Many Bothans died for the second Death Star plans. Um, and I'd be wow. interested to see a whole show about that. Like, <laughs> how did that all happen? And, and you, can, yeah. you can play with that. Oh, and there's rumors. Rumors out there. Ooh, Unconfirmed. Rumor. But let's talk some juicy rumors real quick. Okay, okay. Rumors okay. that Ben Mendelsohn is going to show up in this show. Ooh. It's Krennic. At some point. Those are the rumors. Oh, okay. I'm into it. Will we no. any chance we'll see Mads Mickelson too? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, but, that'd be amazing. But here's the thing. Like, we don't want to normally we're like we don't want more legacy characters. We don't want legacy characters. Would you consider those legacy characters? And do you think adding those types of characters in that we've already seen before are kind of like bigger characters, big name actors? Do you think that would take away from what we're experiencing right now? Just the joy of watching all this new stuff. Um, I would say anything that is actually in the Rogue One of it all is fair game. So, and Krennic was in Rogue One, right? I might be, am I blending? Okay, cool. Sorry, I had a panic as soon as I said it. But yeah, I mean, I think any of that is like there, this is a particular bubble, right? This is a particular bubble and within the bubble, I think it's fine, which is why I think it's totally acceptable for KTSO to show up with Alan Tiddick. Because it makes sense to those characters make sense in this world as it's being presented in this tone, in this palette and whatever. I think I don't want to see Chewbacca show up. I do not want to see. <laughs> what about I don't, Vader? I, I don't. I mean, Vader. Vader I don't like you said, I don't think we're going to get a ton of them. And if we do. I feel like I to some degree i now trust these writers like they clearly have a vision for what they're doing and they're not they're seeding in some fan service but they're doing it in ways that are not like razzle dazzle like it's keeping in tone of this so i'd be less opposed to it that being said i do not want like any aside from like a cameo of of darth vader i don't i don't want this to become mainstream Star yeah. Wars. I do. I, and I think Krennic is fine. He's, an, I he's really a human, like your not idea. a Sith. Yeah, I really like your idea of the Emperor showing up in the Senate mm-hmm. to give a speech or something. I think that would be the perfect place yes. to include the Emperor. And it's like, okay, is it fan service? Uh, fan service in service of the story it's telling, because that would be exactly what yes. the Emperor would do, talking to the Senators and trying to keep them all in line. Um, and it, and it right. lines up exactly with what he's doing in A New Hope when he dissolves the fucking Senate. <laughs> you know, yep. He's like, fuck you all. It's all dissolved. We're taking over now. Um, so mm-hmm. I think that would be great. I don't think Vader should show up in this. And the reason why is because in canon, nobody really knows that Vader exists. Like he shows mm-hmm. up and he's like whispered about and rumored about. He's more, he's, he's more like that kind of, you know, phantom menace in the background where uh-huh. he, sh- he fucking shows up and people are like, holy shit, who is that? What is that? Is there an alien under there? Is it a human under there? Like nobody knows. Right. Um, so I don't think he would, he would sort of fit for, for this show. I hope he doesn't show up, but I do yeah, think, I, I do think they will do a Darth Vader show though. I think we're going to find out. I mean, of course, right? You know, yeah, they're going to do a Darth Vader show. And I think it's going to be all about, you know, what happened in the immediate aftermath after he became Darth Vader uh, in the suit, you know. Um, And, you know, in the the comics, I don't know if you've read any of the comics, uh, 
that they canonize, but the comics are great. I mean, they, they show all, I mean, he's constantly trying to take out Palpatine. Palpatine's constantly trying to take out him. Um, there is oh. this whole relationship between one another that, you know, Palpatine basically hates Darth Vader because he considers him a complete failure for losing to Obi-Wan and getting burned to a crisp. Um, and he's constantly, and, and Vader's constantly trying to find new apprentices that he can use to overthrow the Emperor. And there's just so much cool stuff that you could do with that character. Um, and I hope they do it. I hope they do it. Yeah. Um, I mean, but... given enough time, I think they, they're they going to have to, right? Because they are cranking these things out. Although yeah. Andor is one that sat for a really long time, which tells you something. Like, they, they churned Book of Boba Fett out. This thing was one of the first ones they announced. Can you imagine what Obi-Wan and Book of Boba Fett would have been had they had writing like this? I like mean, I mean not yeah. not even necessarily like this you know high quality. I mean we're talking about like Oscar caliber writing, you know, from an Oscar winner uh, for the show, but just just writing that didn't make the characters stupid idiots. Like yeah. everybody in this show, nobody is treated like a stupid idiot except for Mon Mothma's husband, which I would not be surprised if at some <laughs> point in time it turns out that he's doing something right and that he's this diabolical yeah. Person, I, yeah. you know playing he feels like a mover and a shaker to me yeah i think yeah so. and he's and he's hanging out with the emperor's crew and oh they're the fun mm-hmm. ones and and all that stuff uh-huh. so like and that's what i feel like this this show's writing is not insulting the intelligence of the viewer which is what i felt obi-wan did and book of mm-hmm. Boba Fett, insulting mm-hmm. the intelligence of the viewer and that's why star yeah. wars fans get so pissed off and that's why they get so angry because they love these characters and they're like they're not gonna they wouldn't do this you're insulting me if you're gonna make them do something stupid you gotta give me a really good fucking reason as to why they did something stupid but they don't right. it's like oh well, let's just make them do something stupid because we can have them ride a rancor isn't that cool kids like uh, oh. i forgot it. i had blocked that out i had blocked the da- danny trejo of it all out oh, <laughs> but it's yeah, all talking, coming back to me just like i love danny trejo i'm like no as soon as danny trejo showed up i was like i've i've lost immersion in this it breaks it, it's just, yeah it breaks the star wars vine- like the, it falls away you like you're okay now we're put just him in an cameos. alien suit put him in a yeah. like makeup and make him an alien or something don't make him danny trejo <laughs> you know? yeah there's but, lots uh, of celebrity cameos in the mandalorian but they're all in masks exactly. as it should be I don't have a problem with celebrities popping in, but it's like, hey, he's Robert Rodriguez's friend, and he's going to make him a rancor, because, ha isn't that cool? Or, <laughs> uh, isn't that fun? No. Uh, it was bad. It was bad. But we're not here to okay. talk about that. No, no, no. Um, so, no, no. I will say, uh, we're wrapping up this episode. Thanks, everyone, for yep. listening. Uh, a testament to how great this show is, is we can talk about this for, like, fucking hour. Um, and nothing... <laughs> No, no crazy things happened in this episode at all. It was just talking. Um, yeah. So that's why that's how good it is. So we'll be back next week with episode mm-hmm. six. We're all very excited to see what happens with that uh, space heist. Yes. Um, yeah. So thanks, everyone. Bye, everybody.